Hi, welcome to Traveling Through Exodus. I am Pastor Michelle, and I am so happy you could be here with me today. We left the story off with Moses marrying his wife, Zephora, and he is working in the land of Midian for his father-in-law. And so today we are in um, the third chapter. We start at the beginning of it, chapter um, three, verses one through 12. And here we um, have a wonderful story of the first time Moses encounters God. And um, when we read this today, a question to ask yourself is, when have you experienced God's presence in your life and felt that you were on holy ground? The idea of holy ground, when is it that we've experienced that? It doesn't have to necessarily be um, a building. It can be. It can be in a church building but or a cathedral or something, of course. But sometimes in our lives, we experience a moment where this is holy ground I am walking on. And um, so let us join Moses right now in the story to see his experience, his first experience of being holy ground and and God talking to him. So, Moses at the burning bush. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see God, called out to him out of the bush saying, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go with you? And this, oh, um, excuse me. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have, you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. Here ends the reading. So Moses goes to Horeb, and it's a desert region, um, kind of, um, if we look at a, lap, um, a map, it would be um, kind of probably um, Sinai Peninsula area, so south of Israel today, or um, Israel-Palestine today. Um, so that is the area, um, Horeb is the other term for it, so Horeb or, not Horeb, or Mount Sinai. And just so you all know, um, look up... Um, the church on Mount Sinai, Google it. It's um, very fascinating. There is an old, old um, Eastern Orthodox, I think it's Coptic church um, and monastery there. That has a lot of, at least used to, um, I, I think it's still, I don't know if it's still active, but at least um, years ago it was. And it's very fascinating. I've seen a documentary on it and how um, it's on Mount Sinai, on the Sinai Peninsula, very interesting thing. Um, so here is God appearing to Moses in this burning bush. And the idea, I mean, as we look at what we've been going through in the West um, this last month with wildfires, the idea of burning and um, things, you know, just fast and gone. And um, 
this is a burning bush though with a fire that doesn't consume the bush, which is really an interesting concept now to think of this idea that it's it's a flame, like an alive flame, that's what God appears to Moses as. You know, we don't um, see God's face, Moses doesn't, it says Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. That idea of being afraid to look at God is um, throughout the Old Testament, that it changes you, and we'll see that later in Exodus too, that you can't look darkly at God. And, um, and that, that is, uh, a tradition but it's also um, very different from what was going on in the more um, multi um, worshiping um, polytheistic excuse me polytheistic which means more than one God religions of the time in the ancient world like they had um, statues um, gilded statues statues made of their gods and here we are in um, the story you know there are people surrounded by um, the Egyptians who had a whole pantheon of gods, you know, all these different gods they had, you know, have erected, um, you know, the sphinxes and things like that. And um, all these different characters are painted on the walls and hieroglyphs. And, and you know, so images of God is something that, um, of gods, is something that all the other cultures had really of the time. And here we are with the with Moses, meaning the one God, the God of the Israelites. And what happens, you can't even look God in the face. There's no image made of God. We don't know. We just know God appears in a burning bush. And then he hides his face because he doesn't look directly at God. Um, the power of that, the difference in culture, it's fascinating. And that's the whole idea of this holy ground thing. It's not something that humans created. It's literally he's out in this mountain and God appears to him. And he, has, and he takes off his sandals because he is on holy ground. And even after all of this at the end, I, this is one of my favorite parts of the story because Moses says to him, who am I? I should go to Pharaoh, bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And we can all relate to that. Who am I to do this? Why are you calling me God? I'm not really worthy. That idea of that, the idea of we're not enough is something we hear all the time. But God sees in Moses that he is enough, a man who has murdered, a man who has major emotional issues, is pretty obvious. Um, a man who just feels like he's unworthy of God's love and to be called by God to be a prophet. And God goes, no, you, it's you, you, you're it. And God says, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you've brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. Being a disciple is sometimes really, really hard. And remembering that God chooses us and chooses other people um, outside of what we humans construct to, to show us the way to God, to show us um, and reveal to us ways that God is working in our world. So when we feel like we're out of control, God's still present and shows up in a burning bush on the side of a mountain. You know, God shows up in unlikely places and calls unlikely people to be leaders and to follow. So that is the story for today. And we will continue the story next week in chapter three, where Moses um, hears the divine name revealed. It's such an interesting, interesting passage. So thank you so much for joining me this week with Traveling Through Exodus. And, um, and again, look this week, think about where have you experienced a moment of being on holy ground, either this week in your life or recently. And you can share that with me, uh, message it on Facebook. You can um, message it or post it underneath this video or um, email the church. And if you have any questions about any of this, um, please feel free to email me. Um, and we will try in like every few weeks, if we've got a ton of questions, to answer them in the videos. So let us pray and then we'll be on our way. Dear God, thank you for joining us in your word, being present with us, walking with us. We give thanks for you, that you show up in our lives in unlikely places and call us 
unlikely people to follow you. Amen. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you for joining me.